I'm here to show you how you can use Excel as a tool for your study. You're going to have a lot of data that you will get from your survey questionnaires. And by using Excel, you can have a permanent record of your data, and then you can have that data uh, analyzed and interpreted uh, by using this uh, very handy uh, application. All right. So as you can see here, I have uh, an Excel file opened up. And uh, let's say you're going to now put in the responses of the respondents. So let's say, let's put here respondents. And then uh, now you can type in, let's say you have 50 respondents. Uh, you can type in one, two, three, four, five, but it's actually a very simple trick for that. So equals and then opening uh, parenthesis, then you choose the, the above uh, cell and then you just add one and it will give you the next number. So if you have a lot of uh, respondents, instead of writing one, two, three, four, five, six, all throughout, you can just say, ah, I have 50 respondents, paste it here. So I have 50. All right, but for this example, I'm not going to have 50 respondents. That's so big. Uh, anyway, I just want to show you uh, things. So let's just uh, have 10 respondents. So, all right, so let me delete uh, the rest. So there, and let's say, we're going to have five questions. You probably have more, but again, for the purpose of this example, let's use five. So question one, question two, question three, question four, and question five. There you go. Let's just uh, format this a little bit to make it look uh, better, center them, and then adjust the, the width because we're going to put in words there. All right, so let's also magnify this so you can see it uh, more easily. So there you go. Now you can put in the responses. You can go directly to the numerical value, you know, like one to five, because it's a Likert scale. But uh, I want to put in the text first. Okay, it's up to you. So for example, uh, oops, let's not have that uh, all caps. Let's say strongly agree was uh, respondent one uh, answering to question one. He said strongly agree. And then uh, respondent two said, strongly disagree and then respondent three said agree and so on disagree and then uh, you have the middle uh, category let's call it uh, neither you may call it a different uh, name there so if we fill this up and just uh, copy and paste Okay, so with the power of editing, I'm finished. So what can I do with this? Uh, these are text responses. Let me just uh, rename the, the worksheet here. Text responses. And I want to turn them into uh, numerical responses so that I can uh, have uh, better ways of uh, manipulating them. So I can have another sheet. Let's call this sheet... Uh, numerical responses there so to do that all I have to do is copy the the data and put it in here all right so let's spread it out again there you go let's make it bigger now you can replace all of these with numbers. For example, we know that strongly agree means uh, five in our Likert scale or one depending on the direction, but let's say it's five. So let's choose find and select and then say replace. So we're going to say every time you find strongly agree, you are going to replace that with the number five. So if you say replace all, there it is. It's going to be replaced by five. And then Let's say if you see strongly disagree, you're going to replace it with one. There you go. And then if you see disagree, you're going to replace it with two. There you go. And if you see agree, you're going to replace it with four. 
there and we only have one remaining category which is neither and you're going to replace it with three so replace all and now you're going to see we have transformed all of the text answers into numerical responses now what can you do with the numerical responses if you are a descriptive uh, study and you just want to make uh, uh, analysis on like oh uh, question uh, number one had 58 percent saying strongly agree or disagree something like that uh, you can do it so for example you can have a uh, account of all the categories here so let's uh, type that in again strongly agree agree neither um, disagree and strongly disagree oops disagree there and I want to know oh how many uh, people said strongly agree for question number one now you can see here I can plainly see there are two see five and another five but what if you have you know 60 70 respondents it may take you a long time to manually count them well you can just use a formula it's called uh, sorry it's called count if see count if there you go and it asks for a range so this is the range and then it asks for a criteria so we know that strongly agree the one that we want to count is actually five in this range so we're going to say every time you see five count that so it's going to come up with the number two which is correct right now let's how about agree there are four how many are four? Oh, there should be two also so all we have to do here is a copy it but uh, you have to remember when you copy uh, a formula in Excel, it's going to move the uh, the ranges because it's assuming that uh, you know it has to adjust. So in order to make sure that you don't uh, have that problem, we're going to uh, fix the uh, the range. So we're going to say put a dollar sign on the the numbers so that when we copy it, you know, in a column, it's not going to change. That's what the dollar sign is there for. Okay, it's not going to change the form or uh, the value, but when we copy it, it should uh, work here. So all of these are two because we still have five as the the criteria for this. So all we have to do is say change this into four. How many are fours? Okay, how many are uh, neither? So three. How many are? Let's see disagree and how many are strongly disagree wow it's a it's a huge coincidence they're all two each <laughs> okay that's good but but uh, let's say if I change this into a four look it's going to change see now we have added one to agree and subtracted one from disagree as you can see it does work it just happened that uh, all of them are twos so let's just go back uh, to the original uh, value here and then you can also come up with uh, things like a percentage, you know, what is the percent of uh, the respondents that said uh, strongly agree, agree, whatever, right? So if you want to do that, you can, ju you can just say, let's copy this, paste this here, and then we can have the percentages here. So the percentages, you know, you know how to compute the percentage, right? So you just uh, take the, the number of uh, responses and uh, divide it by the total which is 10 and that should give us 0.2 now if you want to uh, make it like a percentage uh, you're going to just uh, put here in the percentage style and it's going to turn it into percent okay and so you can do that for the other numbers right so there again they're all 20 percent but we can check what if we change this into five that's going to change into 50%. See, it works. So, oops. So now you can use this. You can put in also the data, the data here, 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 and so on. And you can just look at a glance and you can come up with uh, different uh, interpretations about your uh, data. Uh, you can also use the data to make presentations. Like for example, you can make a chart or a, a table, right? Let's see, where is that? It's here, see? I can make a a pie chart like this see I can change 
what are the you know title and the legend and all that right you can just say you know question one and so on you know all that now for people who are going to be using statistical treatments uh, excel is also very uh, helpful for example let's make this smaller so you can see i want to find out the 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 average of the uh, responses for respondents uh, for each respondent so for example respondent one five plus one plus one plus three plus two divided by five that will give you the average if you did that with your calculator for the entire uh, survey questionnaire it will take you a long time so what you can do is you can just say mean let's say this is the uh, satisfaction uh, of students with the online learning system of Ateneo so all you have to do is do the average um, formula okay so it just uh, gives you what is the the range there you go you close it and it gives you 2.4 you can adjust the uh, number of uh, decimal places by adjusting it again on the style so I usually like it as two uh, you can you know adjust whatever you want and then all you have to do is copy this okay imagine if you had like 80 of these all you have to do is put in one formula and then copy for the rest and you will have all the averages now uh, let's say I want to conf uh, compare the satisfaction of the students with their academic performance okay let's say let's just say let's call this their grades right so the, their grades are the following. Let's just uh, randomly assign some grades here. Okay, there you go. And let's say somebody's a genius. There you go. So I can actually use uh, like uh, Pearson uh, coefficient to, to see if uh, what is the level of correlation between the two sets of data. All right, so let's say Pearson R. We're going to put the Pearson R in this uh, box, and all we have to do is again type in Pearson. As you can see, it shows us we need to specify two arrays. We need this array, and then comma, and then this array, and then close it, and then enter. That's it. It gives us a Pearson R of 0.4. So as you can see here, the conclusion that we can draw is that the correlation is not very low. It's also not very high. It's kind of in the middle, which means there is some correlation between them, but not very strong. And the correlation is positive, a little bit positive. So if the satisfaction goes up, the grades goes up a little. Not, uh, it's not strongly correlated, but I think you know what the Pearson uh, interpretation is. You can even use, like for example, I'll show you a t-test. Right? Um, not that the... Uh, it's appropriate to do this but let's just say for example you want to you have data that you can use t-test for well again you can just say uh, find the formula for t-test it will tell you oh I need the two arrays so again array 1 comma array 2 comma and then it's going to ask you one tailed or two tailed well usually in this studies I have seen uh, it's usually two tailed because you don't care about the direction and then it's going to ask uh, for what type you have paired two sample and uh, equal and unequal variance usually it's paired because these are the same uh, students or same teachers that are responding that have the, uh, the satisfaction and the grades so we put that in here and then just press and you're going to come up with this value that's actually a very small uh, item and based on uh, the p the p value is this right so based on that you can compare it with your um, confidence interval and uh, be able to conclude whether you are going to accept or reject your null hypothesis. I'm sure you know already how to, to do that. Okay, so you can do so many more things uh, with Excel uh, using your uh, data, but these are just some of the things that I think you'll be using a lot. And it makes your job um, easier, faster, right? And you can uh, return to your data should you need it, uh, which is not the case when you are using those uh, websites that you probably use. See, you have your original data. You can even present it to your 
uh, critics if they should ask for, hey, where's your data? So you can just show them, oh, this is our uh, data and this is what we did with them. We, we did this, 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 and all that, all right? So thank you for uh, watching this uh, video and uh, good luck with your studies.